Well, it's so funny you said that because Jarvis Green, uh, we had him on last week, and he was talking about uh, Junior Seau and how great of a guy he was and, and really his career, not only with the San Diego Chargers, but even with the Patriots, how special he was and how good of a person he was and how he was a person to look up to. And may he rest in peace, by the way, because uh, you talk about fossils. He's, he passed away, too. Uh, may he rest in peace yeah. as well. Uh, Junior say how we were talking about CTE and, and how, how important he was, not only for the, for the San Diego Chargers organization, but all of the NFL because of who he was and what he stood for. And, and it's a shame that uh, his family and, and the story – uh, of Junior Seau, you, you think of just you try to just think of the great things that he was on the field, and and just uh, the short of life that he had because of the CTE, and that's what I want to get into. Uh, when you heard about CTE, and it, and it was it's such a such a big story for the last I would say last seven eight years, we we've seen. Uh, Patrick Willis retire early. Uh, DeBrickershaw Ferguson uh, retire early. Calvin Johnson retire early. Curtis Martin talks about, I, I know Curtis, uh, you know, I've been to so many events with Curtis, and he talks about in Oakland, he remembers the time that he, he was playing with a concussion, his nose was bleeding, and, it, and, and Bill Parcells told him to get his ass out on the, out on the field and play, you know, and, and, and it's crazy with Vinny Testaverde. So what is your thoughts with CTE? You were a player, and you, you played against some of these players that came down with CTE and, and lost their lives. What were your thoughts when you heard the story and Roger Goodell trying to just completely, you know, wave it and throw it under the rug and, and make it just disappear? What were your thoughts with the NFL and how they handled this? It's twofold because um, you've got the players that uh, the typical type, well, I won't say, well, yeah, typical type of players. They're, they're the guys that, that, that want to get out there and play regardless, right? I mean, mm-hmm. there's a lot of guys on a lot of teams that play in the NFL that just, are, just want to get out there and and smash heads, you know, they want to make plays, they want to, you know, earn their, 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 their incentives, you know, there's all kinds of reasons why they want to get out there and play. Well, when you get injured, um, it, it, it flips. The coaches want you out on the field because you're an investment for the team, no matter what, you know. The trainer in the middle is in the, literally in the middle between the head coach and the player. He's the one saying, well, you know, he's, he's got this going on, he's complaining about this pain or whatever. I don't think it's as bad as he says. Coach says, well, yeah, I agree with you, you know, get him on the field, who cares, you know. Um, obviously, it's changed since then. Um, a, lot of, a lot of rules have changed in you know training camps, taking away a lot of the the hitting and the time you spent on the field for for obvious reasons and and so forth. But I, I think that there's a lot of things now that you fast forward. Now that we've discovered CTE is an issue, and probably discovered obviously it comes from bashing heads and not taking care of the players if they do happen to have a concussion, and and it's a lot more serious than they originally thought. And and I think, you know, it was, you know, the NFL is, is kind of the, the CYA kind of thing. You know, they're mm-hmm. just like kind of trying to cover their ass a little bit. Um, you know, they don't want to necessarily pay out a lot of money, clearly. Um, but we have a union. So that's when the union steps in and says, listen, you know, it's, we got some serious stuff on our hands right here. And we got to take care of, of some of the guys. And, and uh, that's why that, that huge uh, concussion lawsuit is out right now, the, that, that CTE lawsuit. Um, but with regards to just the, just the difference between those players, I mean, they, they, you know, guys want to get out there and play and sometimes it's on them, you know, Hey, you know, we didn't know that back then and clearly now we do, but on the other hand, it's the coaches, Hey, get him on the field. Who cares? He, he, he saw stars, no big deal. Get him out there. Mm. Um, so it, it's, it's twofold and it's, and it's really sad, but now that we've kind of recognized and, and understand it a lot better, uh, hopefully there'll be a lot more changes and, and, um, hopefully they'll take care of the players that have been affected by it. So I wanted to ask about your teammate. Uh, congratulations to him that just got inducted into the Hall of Fame and Tony Baselli, who you played with in Jacksonville. So what was he like as a teammate on and off the field? Tebow, Tebow, Bozelli, we call him. Um, he was, uh, his locker room was right next to mine. So I saw him every single day right next to me. Um, <laughs> he's a sloppy guy. He's got clothes everywhere, stinks, you know, yeah, I'm kidding, kind of, no, he, he's a good guy. He's a, uh, He's gotten really busy in his post NFL career. Um, sometimes he's too busy for the rest of us, but you know, Tony's Tony. Um, and hey, he's in the Hall of Fame. So how do you get, how you gonna argue that? So um, I'm glad he's finally there. I guess you know it's taken him a while. Um, uh, the poor guy. What has it been? Seven or eight years or something? He's been on that list and never gotten that 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 call or the knock on the door. Um, but uh, you know his uh, his family's very happy, excited. The whole organization of Jacksonville here. You know, it's our first uh, Hall of Famer um, as a Jack, uh, Jaguar franchise. So 
um, is very, very excited for the city. Um, we're all we're all behind him and, and support. Um, but you know, Tony, Tony's uh, he's busy. He's doing his own thing, and you know, it's it's. Uh, it, I, I'm glad. I'm happy for him, and a lot of teammates uh, have been real happy for him as well. Um, you know, he only did play seven years, but that was kind of the only holdback. I think is what they were talking about. But I'm telling you, that guy was a stud, man. He was incredibly talented. Um, if, if he hadn't had, hadn't had that bad shoulder, I think would have played another you know ten years or more, um, and definitely would have been a Hall of Fame long, long, a lot earlier than than now. But um, well deserved, and I'm happy for him. As you guys know, we are talking to former Jaguars and Bills kicker and president of Proform Kicking Academy, Mike Hollis. You know, I we've had a lot of kickers on this show, okay? Professional kickers, semi-pro kickers, and I ask them some silly questions. And, 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 and a lot of them, they, they pretty much throw themselves under the bus. Now, we have talked we, – we, we, the, the wrong word. We have spoken – to a lot of unique kickers. Now, a lot of these unique kickers tell us that they're, you, they're, they're very good dancers, okay? And they have to learn how to keep their balance. And uh, their wives took them to ballroom dancing. And then they took them out to merengue and pachata and stuff there. Now, Mike, I want to know, are you a good dancer? Do you have a... Twinkle toes? Are you a ballet dancer? Is that how you, you become know, a good kicker? It, it takes me about seven to eight drinks before I think I'm a good dancer. <laughs> and, um, then, then maybe um, I can get down a little bit. I think, but um, I, I wasn't really, uh, I wasn't really weird about the whole balance thing and kicking. And my philosophy is a little different. I got a lot more forward momentum, so I don't need a lot of a balance because a lot of guys do stop to kick the ball, and they have to be kind of balanced on the plant foot, I guess. Um, but my, my, my thought is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward when I kick the ball you know, for the most part. So, you know, being balanced isn't, isn't something that was something that was really important for me, but, um, being coordinated, you know, it's a different story. So yeah. So <laughs> that goes back to that whole, uh, analogy of the dance, you know, the dancers are typically pretty coordinated. I wouldn't classify, my, classify myself as extremely coordinated, but, uh, I guess I got enough uh, coordination to be a kicker in the NFL. And that was, that's all that I care about. <laughs> Who's the best dancer? Who was the best dancer on the Jaguars? Did, did, did was there anybody that broke it down in the locker room? Was there any uh, crazy music that you listened to when, when you won or lost? Well, who was the dancer? You know, no, not really. I mean, we had guys that were, you know, dancing wasn't allowed in the locker room. We were playing with Tom Coughlin, so I'm kidding. No, um, you know, I don't know. There's, you know, the brothers, they, they, they get in their groups and they dance away. And, you know, they're all good dancers. I, I, I don't have that gene, but did I participate? No, I didn't participate. But, <laughs> but no, we had some good times in the locker room and, and um, you know, a lot of victories, a lot of victories. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask about the, uh, the special teams and the Hall of Fame, too, because we're, we're starting to see a little more of them getting a little more with Devin Hester now being on the ballot this year for the first time. I thought he should have gotten in on the first ballot. And now finally seeing Ray Guy uh, get in as a punter a couple years Reggie ago. Reggie Wayne too. should have been on in this year. It was a bunch of people. Yeah, I know. I, I, right specifically, they're referring Surprise. to special teams, though. Do you, do you think they get disrespected a lot by the Hall of Fame committee? And if so, do you think that kind of thing could change with somebody like Adam Vinatieri, maybe down the road when he retires, Justin Tucker and guys like that, and then kick returners too, like Devin Hester. Yeah, well, you know, there's a lot of qualified people, and that's, I'm sure they talk about it every year. They've got a list a mile long of guys that probably, you know, have the credentials to to be in the Hall of Fame. So it's very difficult for those guys, for the committee to, to choose players. I, I get that. I understand. Um, you know, special teams, you know, clearly I'm, I'm partial to special teams. I have a passion for it. It, it is a third of the game. I, I think that there's more yardage exchange in special teams than the offense and defense combined in any, any given game. Um, if you think, if you consider the kickoff and the punt and all kinds of yardage is exchanged in special teams plays, um, there's not a lot of people that, that really kind of fully understand that. So special teams is incredibly important. Now, the, the reason why a lot of special teams kind of look down on it in a sense a little bit is that, you know, oh, the only players that aren't good enough to be starters, they're the guys that are on special teams. So they're like our second string guys. Um, which is common. I get that. A lot of times, you know, if you're, you're on the bubble or if you're a guy that, that uh, may not be the starter, you're just fighting for a, a position on the football team. If you're good at special teams, you have a good shot of, of, of getting a, a spot on that roster. But um, there's a lot of talent in special teams, and there's a lot of guys like Devin Hester who put a lot of pride in his return abilities, and he was an extremely uh, potent weapon. I had to kick away from him many times. I tried to at least. And he would run. He'd know where I was kicking. I could see him, and I, as I'm kicking off, I'm like, "Oh, he's going that way." I can't. I'm, I'm committed now. I can't do anything about it, you know. But 
Those guys are smart. They're they're fast. They're very very talented. So yeah, I, I would love to see some spe- more special teams guys uh, in the Hall of Fame. But again, they're up to you know up with a lot of competition with uh, a lot of the, the other guys that are well deserving as well. 